Say your name, please. Lorton. Namaskar. I feel very alive when I'm in presence. I feel as though uh, it, it's much more vibrant. Um, I just wondered if you could give some helpful advice, what you could see in me that would draw me more into the truth. So this approach, actually, of resting in presence is, as far as this particular framework goes and this teaching goes, it's very nebulous. Because the experience of resting in presence, for one, may be an experience of identifying with the Soul, the Supreme Presence, the Living Presence, and actually saying, I am that. Whereas for another, it can mean simply being present. So, there is a certain quality of nebulousness about it, which is why it is not actually used as a phrase <coughs> over here. The practice here, or the inspiration that is given in this satsang is to actually surrender. It is not a practice of identifying with Supreme Source. It is not a practice of saying, I am that. Rather, the practice is, and it's very precisely that practice, of saying, I am this, which is all of this, not just the conceptual part of this, but the material, physical, the emotional, the conceptual, the transformative, creative part of the being, the unity consciousness, the ability to be one with the other, as well as uh, the Agnya Chakra consciousness or pluriform consciousness. So it's an entire thisness that is being spoken about here. Now this, thisness, is in surrender to the soul or the individualized that. So it's not simply an experience of I am, but it is this, I am this, in surrender to that. So it's, a, it's actually bending down to something. Because when you take up the experience of presence, I am this, in a material sense, and not presence in a conceptual sense, which is I am, what happens is that the, 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 the quality of surrender is inculcated right from the start of your practice. Whereas if you start to separate from everything and say, I am, and I am not this pain, I am not this suffering, I am not all of these things, which is a practice which is also undertaken by seekers. That's all I would be doing is more I'm not. The practice of I am not, I am not this, I am not that, I am not this, is traditionally called the neti neti. I am not this, I am not that. But neti neti is not a practice. It is not a practice. It is an experience and a realization that arises after a period of practice and the fundamental practice is actually surrender. It is not the idea of detaching from everything and sort of moving into an exalted state. When I look at you, and it's in a personal sense, it's not uh, addressing uh, the world, it's just you, I would say that there is actually, you have not taken off into space already, you're very much present, you're quite actually humble, and you're quite in touch with, with thisness. You haven't spaced out into that so it's a good moment to also bring into your practice the word surrender. Because if you start to detach too much from what's happening around, then you are identifying with Supreme Consciousness or the Soul or Presentness. 
you start to say, I am that, which is what a lot of young people especially who start out on their, on their neo-Advaitin practices in the Indian subcontinent and also in other parts of the world start out and it gives a sense of freedom from the pain and the suffering and a sense of exaltation. And 20 years down the road and 30 years down the road they are walking around in Tiruvannamalai and Rishikesh and other places in a sense subtly sad because they haven't touched the truth with their fingertips. And so if you want that experience of the truth in thisness, then this is where the truth is to be found. Not by detaching from the suffering, but by moving into a state of surrender to the truth itself. And the way you undertake that practice of surrender is actually by with eyes wide awake, present, here and now, in this, solidly discerning between the loud, clamoring, demanding, insisting, yearning, pushing, opinionating voice of the ego and a very subtle impulse that comes from the master of your being, from the Antar Guru which impulses you with either a yes or a no, it's a very precise yes and no that comes from the soul, it's a material presence and it impulses this system just as it did when you were a child, so you already know it. You know that thing, it simply has been obscured and obfuscated over a lifetime of conditioning. So the the practice here is to pierce beyond all that conditioning to actually move not into identification with the soul but into surrender, I am yours, you are the master, you are the soul, you are the living presence. This, this is the servant, is the instrument and from moment to moment that experience is deepened into self-realization as you realize the self you deepen in that experience. In fact, it is diametrically opposite to detaching, rather it is simply moving into a state of surrender. I would say you're actually quite... Yeah, I feel there's a humility here, in this... In this. The thisness of this, if it, if it starts more and more to go into a state of surrender, humility, bending down, you know, in all the layers of the being, slowly your consciousness starts to expand and it's not just the conceptual that starts to get glimpses of the truth, but it's the actual material, cellular physicality of the system that starts to expand into self-knowledge, into knowing itself. So it's a very, like it's a bit of a shock maybe to the system to hear this practice but it's, it's clearly emphasizing in every moment the, that posture of surrender because that is what has been quite conveniently removed from many Neo-Advaitin practices where the gurus maybe speak or the masters may speak about surrender but it's about surrender to the guru. The thing is that surrender does not end with surrender to the guru. The guru is only the... So, like here in the Indian subcontinent we speak about, you know, when we grow up we, we touch the feet of our parents and then we say with that humility and bending down, the parents will show us the, the, the gods. Then we go to the temples and we bend down, we offer, we do artis, we touch the feet of the gods and the gods show us our gurus. Then again it starts, we go, we touch the feet of the guru, do the guru seva, do the artis and so, and then the guru shows us the final destination which is the Antar Guru, so it is something in there that they are speaking about since thousands of years. And it is the surrender to the Antar Guru which is actually the surrender you are trained for. So if you remove that surrender from your practice and you are I am, then that's what you are and that's what you'll be. And at one point you'll have to 
fall back from that exalted state into thisness and the pain has not been transformed then it's back and it hits again many many seekers have fallen from that exalted state and are then confronted with this and then they don't know anymore what to do where to look and how to go so surrender sweet surrender to the master within to the guru in each moment discerning is this action of mine arising from the ego or is it arising from the truth because if you say i am not this suffering okay so that means you are engaging with it rather than saying i am this in surrender to the soul or that so it's a very it's not just a conceptual practice of detaching from everything no it's saying hey why is this body here in the first place it is here because it's meant to be engaged with else you can be a soul if you're that then you might as well be that then why do you need this so that in a nutshell is what is actually spoken about here there are some whose systems are much more propelled by the ego because of the societies they've grown up in or because of what they went through as children all that conditioning in some people it's more difficult to surrender into the soul it's not about surrendering to the pain it's about surrendering to the truth which is actually all which is not pain and it's not circumventing the pain it's simply moving into surrender which is not a circumventing but a strengthening of the system to transform the circumstances that are giving rise to that pain if you surrender then your actions will not cause you as much pain as they do if you act from the ego it's discernment viveka buddhi in every moment so it's a very uh, beautiful sort of practice to you know uh, start out a sadhana by saying i'm not the pain and then suddenly you feel very light and free but that freedom is a conceptual freedom it's only in your thinking it's happening all in the thinking it's a conceptual journey into labyrinths and into roller coaster rides and but it's all happening in the thinking the rest of the system has to be part of that non-dual experience which it is not if it's happening only in the thinking and it can the non-dual experience is the entire system in surrender in that state where it is experiencing itself simply as the doer of the truth <laughs> so that's what i am in the unfortunate position of having to tell you It doesn't seem unfortunate. Very good. I'm very glad. Um, the process of surrender seems fairly obvious in a way. That that, that would be. I see it like a melting. I'm, I'm, I'm melting away through surrender, allowing what I saw myself previously as being just to simply dissolve away. No, but it's not about dissolving no. away. No, it's about becoming more coherent, more present, more contoured, more aware, more alert, more here and now in a state of surrender. It's not about being melting away into nothingness, because the soul is not emptiness. The soul is not silence. The soul is fullness. it's material and it is impulsing and simply because we don't have that experience anymore through the conditioning we cannot even imagine that the soul is material but if you try to tune in after a while beyond the the noise you feel a very concrete presence of a living living impulse that's the, the living presence and it's the thisness in surrender to that moves into a state of coherent contoured presentness which is not melting away anywhere 
The melting away happens, you know how? When there is a dissolution of identity, as you sort of little bit space out, you start to sort of melt. There's, there is less and less identity into samadhi states. For example, if you go into a savikalpa samadhi state where you're just basically a perceiving entity, there isn't much coherence, there's a lot of meltiness and floatiness. This is being very present, there's no melting happening. And it is very precise, you know, because the, the if this, if this body, this thisness has to be an instrument of truth, it has to be present, because that is its, its nature, its nature is to be here. And if we, by going into deep meditation states, move into samadhi states, melting, melting into that, that is a choice everyone can make. But it's not what is practiced here, because when you melt out, you experience the cosmos, but you also have distanced yourself from the thisness of your existence, which is, which is here and now, and actually creating this moment, this moment. So also creating the pain or the joy. But if you are not here, and if you are through long hours of meditation or even conceptual querying, self-enquiry, when it goes beyond a certain point, the system cannot handle it and so the awareness starts to leave and it, it leaves in a dissolution of identity. You start to feel your contours less and less and less, you know? That is why you experience the meltiness and the sort of the flowiness. But what happens, and it would be beautiful if one could flow like this, through a lifetime, but what happens is that at one point, because of the detachment that has caused that floatiness, there is a roundabout circle and back plop you have to enter into this. And then the pain and suffering is still there, it hasn't been transformed through thisness. Which is also why, Lawton, the great masses of the last few centuries, Ramana Maharshi or Sri Aurobindo or Ramakrishna Paramahansa, Ananda Mahima, they all had to come back into their bodies and deal with this. Their enlightened states were when they were not actually in touch with this and then when they made the circle and came back into this, the reality of this had to be dealt with and it was not easy. That idea of, you know, I am not this and detaching from this is, is a pretty idea, but it is also after 30 years and 40 years of these practices. One has clearly seen where it leads to, but when you are in surrender to something you know already as a child, that posture of surrender actually makes you create a life which is more joyful because your, your actions arise consciously from the truth. Your actions, not your thoughts, but the, the very actions arise from the truth. So it is also interesting to perhaps try it out as a practice and see. You know, that's the beauty about spirituality. It's not religion that imposes its edicts and its, its codes of conduct and morals on, 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 on you. It's an experimental sphere and field and you can experiment. See how it feels to be in surrender here and now. Are you more in touch with life itself then? Or are you more in touch with life if you are not this and not that and not the other? Each one feels it for themselves. The only question is, how can you be with life if you are not life? If your fundamental statement is, I am not this, I am not the suffering, the suffering is what life is and 
unless it is transformed consciously, it's not going to go away. That's, in a way, what I agree with is, is to be here now. It always seems as though there's been something slightly drawing me away. It's always said, well, I'll just get this done with and I'll be on to the next thing, rather than this is it and this is absolutely perfect and this is where I would want to be. I mean, not just here, for example, but if I was just halfway along the road or something. Yes, yes, I know, I wouldn't misunderstand mm. you on that. <laughs> so, that is the surrender, isn't it? That, that process? No, it's not. I'm not. No. no, it's very precise, no. it's a surrender. If you say, I am here in this moment and uh, this is where I want to be, no, sorry, this is not what I mean, I want to be there, for example, just paraphrasing you, then what happens is that it is still I who is here and I want to be here or want to be halfway down the road and then I still haven't experienced surrender. I still have not experienced sweet surrender in this system, which means I am yours. It's that posture of being here and now and saying, I'm yours, I'm in surrender. This system, this me, this me, Lawton, is an instrument of the truth impulse, which is the soul, which is love. And I'm in surrender to love, I'm in surrender. So in this moment, I try to be aware as to from where my actions arise. That is a very different posture from saying, I am here now and because this is where I want to be, or not really, halfway down the street. That is a different posture. You see the difference? So I'm looking, I'm saying, where are my, where are my thoughts and feelings arising from? Where your will to action is arising oh, from, or where the, where the need for action or will to action or intent is arising from. It is not going to arise from the soul because the soul has no desires, no needs, no wishes, no wants, nothing. It's just an impulsing entity. When a need to action arises, the question has to be, is this something that this has to do now? Is this the right thing to do? It arises in the thinking and it could arise from anywhere, it could arise from the ego. Who is the master of the being? Who is impulsing that system? Who impulsed that system when it was a year old? Something was pushing this thing into action and that thing is what we call the antaratman, the antaratman, the inner residing soul, a drop of cosmic soul. So when you, when you say, I'm not this, I'm not that and the other, you're detaching actually from all that is this and what this has caused. And so it takes you into cosmic experience rather than into terrestrial, corporeal, actual material presentness. So it's, you know, in the beginning when you take up a practice like this, it doesn't have that novelty and that... and that false sense of freedom, of conceptual freedom that you can actually have if you suddenly wake up one morning and say, hey, I'm the living presence, I'm not this pain. Then, what is your motivation not to create that pain, which is created by your actions. So, it's taking responsibility and saying, I'm Lorton and here I am and now I have to see these actions of mine, where do they arise from? What is impulsing them? And move with the truth in surrender, in sur You are not surrendering to the action, you're surrendering to an entity, to the truth to the soul, to the living presence, to the antaratman, to love.
it's like a switch has to be made in the conceptual approach to what this is going to do now in this life. Sweet surrender, you know, it's a, it just strengthens you and makes you present and contoured and here and now. And when you're in surrender to the soul, you're also in surrender to the soul. You, you feel the other, so you also feel what the other is going through. You feel this, so you feel this. It's a very different way of living. That presentness is solid and it's here and now. It's not a a conceptual presentness, but also actually a material presentness.